Welcome back to Next Gaming, where we cover everything newsworthy that pertains to games. If you want to support the channel, hit the subscribe button. We create gaming and movie-related content daily. Starting off the show, we're going to go over the new games out this week. We got Hogwarts Legacy is out on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One now. I know it had a little delayed from the original release, so if you haven't picked it up, check them out. As for reviews, we got Red Falls going live, sitting at a 64 out of 100 on Metacritic. The game is getting a lot of bad press, full circle, you know, all around, every which direction. But, you know, is it fun? Among the common gamers, it seems the game has too many issues to see its silver lining, if there is one there, to be honest. But for me personally, I'm having more fun with it than Deathloop. I know it's not the same dev team, but still, Deathloop was just not for me. I didn't like the gameplay loop. You know, it just um, it just wasn't it, it wasn't it for me. And I actually really was hyped for Deathloop, and that it, that was kind of disappointing. But this was at least it it kept my attention, and I, I played for a good grip. But it is broken. <laughs> it it has so many issues with its story, its dialogue. There's no cutscenes. It's like these telltale graphic novel stills kind of like pan through i i don't know it's it's a disappointing game but for me personally i'm not that disappointed because from the get-go i was never for this game i thought it kind of looked a little off i thought the gameplay loop didn't look appealing you know it just it didn't do it for me but it did it just enough to get me to download it from game pass for free but <laughs> it's not my game i got about nine hours in before i dropped it because it's just it's it's incomplete one but it's also just not my style like it's a it's a bad looter shooter at the end of the day and uh it's just not for me i'll have a more in-depth review on redfall coming this weekend with its own separate video but um yeah it's not hitting all right guys on to the headlines for the week starting off with mario it has passed the one billion dollar box office the sequel is obvious, but also the rest of the Nintendo famous IPs are also on the table as well, obviously. I'd love to see a PG-13 Metroid, you know, a little bit more darker, not so PG, you know, that'd be really cool. Or, you know, they could really do anything at this point, Kirby, Donkey Kong, uh, Luigi, like Luigi's Mansion, all the shit that we already know growing up, and then maybe throw some, some, uh, some sneaks in there. That, you know, if it's Illumination and they have a good track record, these movies should do, you know, decent, I would imagine. Maybe they're not all $1 billion box offices because not everybody's Mario, but, you know, it'd be nice to see Nintendo have a little franchise of genuine animation. Star Wars Jedi Survivor is having a pretty shaky launch across the board, but especially with PC apparently getting it the worst as per usual. It popped a question in a lot of people's heads. Is PC optimization really this challenging? Should this game have been delayed at least on PC for a week or two to get some of the, you know, the premature fixes that it needed, you know, or was it, you know, is this a much bigger issue and these games are going to take months and months to, to really garner down on these, these issues with PC? Because what I've heard is the update has fixed the PS5 and the Xbox to a degree it still has its issues but it's not completely uh broken as it was on launch where pc is still having major problems so i'm wondering i don't know it's it just sucks that i think the i know a lot of people put the question in do the the different variants of pc specs kind of fuck with the you know the traditional path i know higher ups were saying that like the the concept of putting it out there is the only true way to to see the see the actual effects of of your project and then you fix it as you go i don't know if that's necessarily true but maybe on a scale like this or if you're dealing in a pc market i don't know maybe they should just delay pc releases so it's more streamlined and it doesn't inflict because this just looks bad this just looks bad as a whole either way if you had to fix the pc and if even if you're saying that you're trying to make the pc version perfect that doesn't mean that you can you can launch it in a shit state you know you should have your own beta testers kind of find the kinks i guess not you, you don't sell a product like this you know it's kind of unacceptable in a, in a fashion but who knows that's a very interesting question though is pc optimization really this challenging sony has released a recent statement stating that they aim to sell 25 million playstation 5s by april 2024 that is insane if we actually look at what they're at right now okay so right now they're at about 36 million consoles sold so they're reaching for 60 million roughly around april next year that's kind of crazy that's that's nuts so they would be passing the 
on like if we're looking at the grand scheme of things they'd be passing the super nintendo uh the xbox one and they'd be up there neck around the nes at 61.91 million so yeah that's they'd be reaching right into the top 10 so they're getting there uh, are they easily going to go over the ps4 that's a huge question people are saying are they because the ps4 is at 117 and it's already boasting that it's going to be at 60 and it had multiple years left in its cycle after 2024 so that'd be really interesting uh even if it could threaten the switch the switch is only at 123 so they're per, they're fucking halfway there <laughs> in three years time that took nintendo 7 so uh i don't know that's 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 very interesting very interesting to see you know it, it always comes down to the ps2 can it beat the ps2 the greatest con the greatest selling console of all time you know <laughs> it'd be very interesting to see a positive news story from xbox that's a twist with the latest dashboard update being revealed, it's looking much more simple and minimalist. I'm digging it. I love it. Should be really cool to play with all the backgrounds and themes. And it just, it looks crisp. It looks like everything's right there. It looks sexy. I dig it. I love it. And I cannot wait to get this. I don't know when it's coming out, but it's it looks so much better than what we have. I don't know what they're really going for with the, the, the current dashboard, but I'm all for this. Sony also talked to live services. Herman Hulse stated that the multiple live service games across this five years doesn't mean the company is making 10 Fortnites or 10 Destinies. It's not a single genre or business model. Sony's going after variety. Hopefully they can figure out their own Fortnite magic with a twist in mind. I don't know what they're going for, if not what the norm is right now. Hopefully, you know, this they're, they can make some innovations. I don't know. Let's see. Sony also stated they want to increase acquisitions by 20%, with many claiming EA and Take-Two are the possible mergers in play. I'm thinking Ubisoft could be a good fit, especially with X Defiant and The Division being kind of like these live service counterparts of popular games. Uh, you also have Assassin's Creed, which could also be very fitting for the PlayStation brand if it's done correctly. Now, when it comes to acting independent, is it necessarily independent if Ubisoft and Bungie only puts their content on PC and PS5? Because that's, they're still, like the full market is just not on Xbox at that point. Does that still make them independent? That was a recent question I was having with a buddy. Um, I, I don't know. I think they could totally just put everything on PC and PS5 and make the world happy. You know, even the Xbox gamers that are hopefully on have a pc they could even play the games if do you know it's not like you need a ps5 console to play these games so i, I don't know that's very interesting but 20 percent increase i'm i'm man I, I would really be pointing towards ubisoft or i know some people were saying square enix i don't believe sony would go and merge with the company considering how close their relationship is at this point you know final fantasy 16 being predominantly exclusive to ps5 at this point will it even hit xbox in december or just go to pc you know and call it a day i don't <laughs> being a first party dev in spirit kind of i don't see this happening i don't unless it's just for the final fantasy ip in and itself like they buy that outright but that that's square <laughs> that's square's money maker they really can't just give that up so i don't know what the hell i don't think so i i don't think square enix would be bought by microsoft Maybe they have a deal with Sony that they don't merge with 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 the the Xbox Studios. Maybe that's a a thing. I don't know, but that is something. Mortal Kombat 12's announcement coming soon. 30 year anniversary video implies such, possibly a Sony showcase or Summer Games Fest. So we can just keep an eye out for that. I'm sure it's going to be announced within two or three months. But yeah, Mortal Kombat 12. I cannot wait. I'm just this is just a great year for fighting games. We got Street Fighter 6, we got Tekken 8, we got Mortal Kombat 12, we got a Dragon Ball Z fighting game as well. There's there's just so much to go around. As for the May Game Pass titles coming this month, we have Redfall, obviously, that already hit. We have Weird West getting an ultimate edition, I I, I guess. Uh Shadow Run, a game called Fuga 2, and Ravenlock. Wow. Game Pass is killing it, you guys. This is, looks phenomenal. I was never really a big fan of, of Weird West, or really any of these. These all look kind of like uh, low-level indie, guy, like double-A titles. You know, I'm, I'm just not... I have, I have other stuff to do right now. I do not want to play those. <laughs> but if you are interested, check them out. The official Gran Turismo trailer has been released. I'm going to make a, uh, a trailer reaction video soon. Hopefully, if it's not already out. Um, 
I, I'm hyped. I'm, I'm, I'm in. I'm for it. I'm not really against it. I like racing and I like the story. It's very unique, especially for this case. Like I didn't know what they were going to do with Gran Turismo, but obviously going this, this route is, it's just a no brainer because it's, it's literally un like unthinkable that an actual kid was playing Gran Turismo and then became a Gran Turismo uh, race driver. That's just nuts. That is incredible. Marvel's Midnight Suns have been canceled for the Switch. Uh, this was kind of disappointing news for a lot of people, I would imagine. But um, in all honesty, uh, it wasn't that huge of a title anyway. But if you don't have a PC, Xbox, or PlayStation, then what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? <laughs> Marvel Spider-Man also got its remastered digital edition hitting the market for $49.99. So if you haven't played that in, since it came out in 2018, go pick it up. It's... You can, I think you can even exchange your PS4 version for $10. I know some people are, they're not a fan of Sony doing that, but still you can get a whole new edition for 10 bucks. It is the digital edition. So I don't know if there's going to be like a physical release, but we'll see. The president of Capcom believes Street Fighter 6 should accomplish 10 million units. This is kind of a high stake to be honest, but I mean, if it hits all the markets, if everybody's playing this and it's popular, I think this is true, especially if there's a, a sudden price drop within the summer, you know, and then you have the Black Friday sales with all the other fighting games also being out. I don't know. That can be a pro and a con for people that are, you know, into fighting games. You have a bunch of fighting games for people that aren't. You have so many fighting games to choose from. You don't really know which one to pick. So, yeah, that's that that seems like a bit bit of a <laughs> bit of a reach. Ten million is a lot but we'll see we'll see and lastly xbox officially announced the xbox showcase is coming sunday june 11th 10 a.m pacific standard time with the starfield direct proceeding after will this showcase come out swinging or will we get more belated promises from microsoft microsoft's hands-off approach to their studios very well could be a major concern meanwhile microsoft doesn't mind stepping in when they see fit for example when redfall's ps5 version was scrapped they were very predominantly involved in that either way if xbox doesn't know already studios under them that perform badly are a bad look on xbox in general <laughs> let's just hope they can set up the second half of 2023 well and highlight what's in store for 2024 as well so we'll just have to wait and see that's coming june 11th 10 a.m pacific standard time anyway guys that's it for today's show don't forget to like comment and subscribe to join the wolf pack peace